It was, you know, spider practice. We, we, you know, kind of took the pads off today. We knew it was a great day to get out in front of fans. So we had a great turnout, beautiful weather. Um, we reduced some reps to some of the guys that had some high volume, um, you know, over the past 15 practices. So we had a chance to work some other guys. You guys, you know, as you guys know, we missed some guys that were out with illness. So we kind of caught up a few of them. Um, solid day. And then uh, they're off tomorrow. And then, and then we'll get some life work in on Monday. Missing, missing, missing guys, missing time making up for them. Like Caleb Sampson participated or Omar's in Monday. Yeah, they're, they're, they've been out now most of the week. You know, we still wait to see, but we expect them back. So. Where's the running back room, you know, about a week from opening? What, how's the running back? Yeah, where's the running back well, room? Well, right you now? know, again, they're just all getting back. I, It's probably our deepest position yet. And I continue to see. Uh, Great competition there, very pleased with where they're at. And, uh, you know, again, it's highly competitive, so it's been good. Does that depth allow you to work Devin and Kai more on special teams if they've met their yeah. returning? Yeah, they're both going to be involved in the return game. I, I would expect Daniel Highshaw to have some some other roles within special teams. Tori Lachlan was one of our uh, most used and best producing special teams players last year in many different roles. Uh, Savion Morrison, I think, is another guy that's going to have ways to help us in that. So all of them, and uh, I think we continue to address it between that linebacker and defensive back. Those are, if we're deeper this year, that should help us in special teams. Between now and the start of game week, where do you want to see the, the team improve overall? Right? Any point of emphasis there? I'll continue. I, I think it's everything. You get a chance to evaluate some tackling when, when we do go live here. Um, Again, consistency and, and as we add things and, and making adjustments, you know, on the defense side of the ball and checks and coverages and, and all those type of things that we're doing. Offensively, again, uh, striving for consistency in both way and both run and pass. Continue to work, um, you know, to find. Um, I think we're we're honing in pretty pretty good on top five and six. You know, offensive linemen. We mentioned MRJ being out right now, so it gives other guys opportunities. We continue to to evaluate the depth from you know seven through ten. I don't know you talked about Dominic pretty much at all, but what have you thought about his adaptation process so far? Outstanding, outstanding. We could not be more pleased. We 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 had good reviews that we were going to get a really good football player. And uh, he's matched all of that and exceeded our expectations and his abilities to adapt. He started off at tackle, he's playing some guard. Um, yeah, he's going to help this football team. There have been a lot of the Big 12 teams that have had some pretty substantial injuries. So do you feel pretty fortunate that you guys were able to this entire period yeah, right? without having anybody yeah, to go down? Well, yeah, it's, it's unfortunately it's part of the game. Uh, you know, we still have a ways to go before we kick off. Um, we try to be smart in how we how we're doing it. And, you know, part of the reason, um, you know, some of the guys that didn't do as much today, it's based on uh, data and uh, you know, uh, you know, workload and uh, what do they call that in the NBA? Uh, load management. Yeah, there you go. You, we, we'll use that one. Load management today. That was a load load management day. So I mean, but we do look at that, and 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 there is stuff with that that we want to. Um, you know, try to make sure because, uh, you know, during these times and how we practice and the reps and things, that's where you don't always happen right away in practice that day, but it's it's the volume of work that can cause pulls and strains and things. And, uh, you know, as the closer we get to kickoff, we'll make sure we're in as best shape as possible. And hopefully, uh, you know, we continue to practice such a way that we're, we're as close to full strength as we can be for that opener. So you're tracking... Volume of work, number of reps, like you mentioned mm -hmm. data goes into that. Seems kind of yeah, we have, uh, in fact, uh, Daniel and the guys can get you, like with Connor McNally, one of our assistant strength coaches, and Matt Gildersley can tell you about, you know, yeah, the catapult system that we do that tracks miles per hour, heavy volume. You know, we, we've structured all our practices. Some are like lower volume days, which today was. Um, we have low medium days, medium, and then the higher is. And, and many people think that it's based on contact. It's based on the volume of running and other things. So there's days that we're just going to do like red zone seven on seven, uh, one on ones in the red zone versus what happens. It's you know you go to the 40 or 50, everyone's run deep route, run past somebody with that volume. 
certain days uh, kickoff or punt coverage, we might just cover for 10 yards versus the whole coverage, or we'll work the final part of the, the closing closing on the ball. So we're not we're not making the guys run as much, but teaching in other ways. Those are ways that we try to reduce the total volume. Those are those vests that they're wearing the track sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And there's the thing in the end, and then if somebody sits in the and, you know kind of sits at at the computer and plays that. So it's it's really good. We. You know, we're getting closer to have everybody in them. Um, I, I think hopefully by next year we'll have that. And, uh, but we track it. We track it during summer conditioning. We, we track it in spring football, all those things. So we kind of look at it. it. It might be second nature, but what, what do you tell these guys to get through the next two weeks? I mean, well, now I, I think, you know, last few days might be a little more of a hump day. You know, or the hump of this, and, and school starts now, so we get another set of, right. you know, adjustments of, of schedule. Um, but their day changes; they're not in this building quite as much. Obviously, in the afternoons, they're not. And, and uh, but hopefully, when you get under two weeks, you start sniffing kickoff, and you start getting excited, and um, you know, we'll start turning our attention you know, and focusing on, on installation on some things on Tennessee Tech, and and uh, I hope that's the part that that. Uh, you know, I said get some, get some excited. You know, the, you put all this work in, especially from January till now, and now you're getting close to what what you're doing it all for. So sometimes I struggle if you're not excited about it. If you put all the, you know, you put eight months of work into something, I I hope you'd be, you know, embracingly excited to to get there. Um, yeah, I I would say that, and and the other part of it is that. Again, some of the roles will start being a little more defined as a starting point, and that's an adjustment for guys that have, again, worked hard and competed, and maybe it's not exactly where they're hoping at the moment, but you got to stay with it, and that's part of growing, growing and maturing and working and developing and also being a good teammate. And that's going to be also important as well is that, you know, how are you going to be able to help this football team um, get this thing turned around and embracing it for the current situation? Yeah, your fans want to know all the time about a two deep. Um, yeah. Have you shown your team one yet or, or when does that first one show up? The assistant coaches haven't even shown me one because I haven't asked. <laughs> okay, we talk about groups and, right. you know, you say that and you can, you know, you get an idea a little bit where it's at in, in some positions that are a little more defined. But again, too deep and, you know, Jim Panagos may may rotate eight defensive tackles. Yeah. There could be five or six defensive ends. There's going to be three or four tight ends. We talked about it. So too deep, I don't know. Unfortunately, and no offense, it's like you, you have only so much room to print a too deep, and that's standard. So when a guy doesn't see his name, you know, he gets, you know, so – We'll get there someday when Daniel says we have to release one. But, uh, um, you know, it, it's working. And, and we've said as we've gone through is how accurate that will be. Um, and, again, I, I want our guys to always be striving to, to be in that type of rotation for a roll on game day. You can release a four game. Okay, well, <laughs> what is it? i got to be like – to coach Harbaugh or somebody, everybody above this line or something, and uh, all this, but uh, but uh, we'll forget that. Yeah, well, but uh, yeah, we'll get there. I, I think you know. Again, it, it usually shows itself, and uh, and I'm sure it will. Yeah. Sorry, just one more. What makes Lonnie valuable on special teams? So Lonnie? Yeah, I saw him running on campus. Chuck Martin, his former coach, told me, he said, you better make sure, like, he didn't want to lose Lonnie. He said, you, you just better make sure he's on the kickoff team because he's the best guy I've ever had. And he wants to do it. I don't know, he's 250 pounds running at you, and he, and he loves it. I'm, you know, so, and again, when you start putting guys like that, that's contagious within your locker room when they see um, guys that are working with first units and, and guys that are, you know, you know, getting a lot of attention other different ways. It shows other younger players that that's what you need to do. And also, uh, every player that wants to have that opportunity to play at the next level, you know, not many guys are, you know, and I always tell guys, no no one was recruited to be in the front row of the kick fraternity. Okay, we don't go out recruiting to a high school and ask, hey, John, I'd like you to be the right guard on the kick fraternity. So, but somebody's got to do it, right? And when, when you get a guy and not not just a guy that that's his only thing on game day. Sometimes it is, but um, 
If, but when you have players that start and do things for you on those, I think it makes your football team better in a lot of different ways.